We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, his Son, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> I do welcome you this afternoon. I often say the reason I welcome you is because I have the microphone. And there's something to that, because when we come to a wedding, when we come to the wedding, we're always here at the invitation of the bride and groom. So I welcome you on their behalf. I hope you're happy to be here. It's a happy day, a beautiful day. I'm especially delighted to be here. I really am. I mean, we have many weddings in church, but you know, I just feel a, a great thrill and a tie with these two people, uh, with Nate and his family. And if you're Catholic in Grand, Grand Rapids, who doesn't know the Hollerans? And a little bit more, I go back to Grandpa Dale, right, way back then. And of course, with Julie and her family, I mean, from IHM, uh, when she was just a munchkin, and, uh, and now at St. Robert's, or Saint, so I'm just delighted to be here. We come, all of us, to witness their marriage vows. And you know, when you use that word witness, especially in church, not being a spectator. You know, no matter how good everybody looks. You know, we're not here to watch a wedding we're here to give Christian witness to this day. So in doing so, we pray with them, we pray for them, we ask God's blessing upon them, we bless them ourselves, we offer Julie and Nate all the encouragement and support they need. It is a joyful day, so enjoy, let's praise God in song. O God who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church. Grant, we pray, to these your servants that what they receive in faith they may live out in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to God's word. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this love, not love that we have loved God, but that he loved us so that we might, so and, and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. 
No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because the slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We joked last night about how long the homily would be uh, with Lene, but, but the reality is a wedding homily should never be very long for two reasons. One, you didn't come here to listen to me. We came here to listen to them. And secondly, if a homily is, de is defined as taking God's word and living it out in life, practically, what's a better homily than the bride and groom standing here and giving vows to each other? It's a great homily. But I think I'm on the program, so I'll say a few words. Um, let me just see. Oh, yeah. I have something for you. I had to go hunting for this. I still had a few left. It's yours. <laughs> now, if you're wondering what I gave them, it's a holy card. And it goes back almost 45 years because it's one of the cards from my ordination. And I, had, I just had to go hunting a little bit. I did have a little, little few of them left. Back in my day, when I got ordained in Washington, D.C., I was with a religious congregation, and it was the custom to, uh, for any of us getting ordained, we would have those holy cards printed, you know, kind of like for a funeral, a little different though, and um, just a little holy, a, a, a memory of the memento, if you will, of that day. And it would have our name and the... Uh, the uh, date of ordination, just something to have. So why did I give you that? You're looking at it, maybe you can figure it out. Not because I'm hoping you'll also have almost 45 years of marriage. I want you to have 90 years of marriage. You're young, you're gonna live a long time. Not because of that. Not because I want you, I don't, I want you to remember who did the wedding because, <laughs> because I have run into couples who said, were you the priest who did our wedding? I wanted, you, you only had one, you know, but anyway, not because of that. But maybe you could figure it out if you look at the card again closely. It's because of the top, the words at the top. You know, in that little holy card, I picked a scripture quotation, and you've heard it today in the second reading. It's from 1 John. Translation is a little bit different. They're always changing translations. That translation back then was this, just a few words. Love consists in this. Not that we've loved God, but that God has loved us. Love consists in this, almost as if if you opened up the dictionary and you found the word love, it wouldn't be my picture, it wouldn't be yours, it would be God's. Powerful words, always for me. For, and every time, you know, they come up in, in the lectionary on a Sunday or on a weekday, oh, it always brings me back. Why did I choose that? Why did I choose that reading? And why did I choose those few words to somehow define my priesthood? And why did you choose those few words? to somehow be part of your wedding. You, John in the gospel, John in the second reading. Because God speaks of God's love for us. And we know, we know how fragile we are. We know how, how, how we struggle to love. You know, we, we know how hard it is to live in God's image and likeness. And yet we take a deep breath and we say, oh, but it's not ultimately about me. It's about the God who loves us and who loves us so much 
that he gifts us, because the following words were, love consists in this, not that we've loved God, but that God's loved us and given us his son. How did he give, how does he give his son this day? God loves us so much that he gave Nate to Julie. And God loves us so much that he gave Julie to Nate. I mean, God, everything is gift. God pours out his gifts upon us. So, so it's in God's love that we come here today. And it's in the fact, you know, what do you do when you get a gift? Most of us say we're supposed to say thank you. There's one thing better. Did you know that? When you, when you give somebody a gift, if I give somebody a gift, there's one thing I, better than, than hearing the word thank you. It's hearing the words, oh my gosh, it's what I've always wanted. It's the best thing you can say. You know, you're, you're pleased. And so God has given you each other. And, and then what else can we say? I mean, the gift of God's love. And then we heard, we heard in the opening prayer that, um, that marriage, the marriage, the wedding we celebrate, in St. Paul's words, would foreshadow the relationship of God, of Christ and his church. We always, looked at, we always look at marriage. St. Paul says that of all the things we might look at in the world, if you really want to know the relationship that God has with us, it's in a marriage. And so, love consists in this. Think of the vows. Love consists in this. It's, it's uh, Nate saying to Julie, love consists in this. Not that you've loved me, but that I've loved you. And she says back to him, well, heck with you. Love consists in this. Not that, not that I've loved you, but that you've loved me. And isn't that the marriage vows? Two people coming, what do we say when it's unconditional love? Two people coming before the Lord with all the prayers and the blessings and the God who loves us and saying to one another, oh, no, no, I take you in good times and in bad and sickness and health. No, 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 I take you. You know, and, and just pouring out, just as God loves us first, pouring out that love to one another. I do wish you more than 45 years, but I think more than anything, just as, as these words have somehow throughout 45 years framed my life or spoken to me and reminded me again and again what it's all about, I hope those words, maybe the, maybe the little card or just write those words down, those words from one John somewhere in your wedding album, that those words will frame you, that you'll remember before anything else, God loves us first. And the manifestation of that love is in what he gives you today and all the days of your life. So now I ask you to remain seated as you stand before us, accompanied by your wedding party to exchange your vows. My dear friends, you have come together in this church so that in the presence of me, the church's minister, and this gathering of family and friends, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of all of us gathered here, I ask you to state your intentions. Julie and Nate, have you come here to enter into marriage freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God 
and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of marriage, now turn to each other, join your hands, and declare your consent before God and his people. I, Nate, take you, Julie, to be my wife. I, Nate, take you, Julie, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. I, Julie, take you, Nate, to be my husband. I, Julie, take you, Nate, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessings within you. What God joins together, let no one separate. May the Lord bless these rings, which you, have, which you give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Julie, receive this ring. Julie, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nate, receive this ring. Nate, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. We now have the privilege again to pray for this couple and to pray for them for the first time as newly married people. The prayers that we will pray, our intercessions prayed for us. Your response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's teachings will be a guide and light for Nate and Julie's marriage. We pray to the Lord. For all who are part of Nate and Julie's lives, their parents, friends, and companions along the way, and for all who have helped them bring them to this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the love that Julie and Nate have for each other each day will overflow and become a blessing for all who they meet, especially the poor in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our That all married couples, particularly those celebrating here today with Nate and Julie, will continue to share and acknowledge in their marriages the steadfast love of God, we pray to the Lord. For all our loved ones that left us too soon, especially Jean Engel, Donald DeWilt, Fed Braun, Dale Hollern, Landry Hollern, and Tim Hollern, that they will continue in the goodness of God's providence to enjoy God's presence in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear these and all the prayers of our hearts, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments as the altar is prepared. Please stand and together let us pray that our sacrifice may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice. Show favor to our supplications, O Lord, 
and receive with a kindly countenance the oblations we offer for these your servants, join now in a holy covenant that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for each other and for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that the human race, created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife, you might bestow a true image of your love. For those you created out of love, you call to the law of love without ceasing and grant them a share in your eternal love. And so the sacrament of holy marriage as the abiding sign of your own love consecrates the love of man and woman through Christ your Son. Through him, the angels and all the saints sing out the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Julie and Nate, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. At the sacred time in a wedding mass, the church calls us to pause and to turn to him, praying especially for his blessing upon this couple now joined in marriage. It's called the nuptial blessing, the marriage blessing. I'd ask you with me to extend your hand over them as we pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined together in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Julie, and upon her companion for life, Nate, and may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of marriage, they may adorn their family with children and enrich your church. In happiness, may they praise you, Lord, in sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their work and know that you are near to comfort them in their needs. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly of the church and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be. Please be seated as communion is served. We do know that weddings have many traditions associated with them, and one of the, the Catholic traditions that goes who knows how far back is honoring Mary as queen of all disciples, of all married people. And so the tradition is for now the bride, accompanied by her husband, to take a flower or a bouquet to Mary's shrine.
as I said, our witnessing was praying with this couple and, bless, and asking God to bless them and blessing them ourselves. And so this final blessing, we once again bow our heads and pray. Please respond amen to these prayers. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you one of one heart in love for each other, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and always abide in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children and in your friends and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and the needy who have, have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and all who are gathered here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so if we didn't miss any parts, I have the honor of introducing to all of you for the first time this newly married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Julie and Nate Holleran.